Football Championship. From the Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey, a semifinal in the East Regional, the six-seeded Virginia Cavaliers against the second-seeded Cincinnati Bearcats. The winner of this game will advance to Sunday's final against either North Carolina, the top seed, or fourth-seeded Arkansas. Those two teams will meet here in northern New Jersey later tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Clark Kellogg. It's a pleasure to have you with us. A really exciting matchup, and if you wanted to epitomize Cincinnati, Clark, what word do you pick? High intensity. I've got to go four words. High intensity, tenacious, in your face, all night long defensive pressure. That's what Virginia will have to deal with tonight. Well, if I'm a Virginia fan, I say, how do you do that? Well, one thing you have to do when you play Cincinnati is you must make basketball plays. You've got to be strong with the basketball, and you must be in an attack mode. That means when you break the pressure, you have to look to make baskets. It's Virginia out of the ACC against Cincinnati representing the great Midwest Conference. Back with the starting lineups and the tip right after this. CBS Sports. Brendan Byrne Meadowlands Arena has been sold out, though not every seat is filled yet. Let's check the lineups, first of all, for the Virginia Cavaliers. They come in with a 21-9 record. They have Junior Burrow and Jason Williford starting along with Ted Jeffries at center. Cornell Parker, number five, and Corey Alexander, who may be the key as far as Virginia is concerned. Tonight, he's the leading scorer and will bring the ball up. For Cincinnati, it's going to be Eric Martin, and Terry Nelson gets the start at one forward. Corey Blunt at the other. Uh, Gibson, Terrence Gibson off the bench starts for Alan Jackson, who will not see action tonight with an injury. And the other starter is the third-team All-American, Nick Van Exel. Bob Huggins in his fourth year as the head coach of the Bearcats. 77 graduate of West Virginia and Jeff Jones, 33-year-old head coach of the Virginia Cavaliers at the end of his third full season. The referees tonight are Dave Libby, David Hall, and Tom Lopes. This is a Cincinnati team that advanced with decisive victories over Coppin State and New Mexico State. The average margin of their wins 32 points for Virginia. They ousted Manhattan by 12 in the first round and then knocked off a strong UMass team to reach this game. Cincinnati controls Eric Martin hands it back to Nick Van Exel. You're going to see man to man from both of these teams. Virginia pretty stingy at their defensive end only allowing the opposition to shoot 41 percent from the floor. Van Exel, who has been in a shooting slump, ends that with a punctuation point. He gets the three, and there's a turnover off Virginia. That is the Van Exel three-pointer. He had 10 points in the last two games. Well, he's capable of volcanic eruptions as a scorer. They haven't needed him to score in the first two games of the tournament. He could have a huge night tonight. Here's Terrence Gibson, the senior from Dauphin, Alabama. Van Exel, will it be two in a row? Yes. Five nothing, and here comes the pressure. They do get it across the timeline, and up the other end, it's Junior Burrow, and it won't go. Chased down by Eric Martin, the outlet pass to Gibson. Five nothing, Cincinnati, and they have the ball. Back it comes to Terry Nelson. Underneath Eric Martin, and he is fouled. Martin has had a fabulous tournament thus far. 19 points, 10 boards a game, 67% shooting. And I don't know if there's a player in the country at 6'6", 210 pounds, that can do what he can do inside. He's so strong up in the air when he goes up to score inside. Gibson inbounds back to Terry Nelson. They haven't missed. Corey Blunt gets two. And it's a 7-0 Cincinnati lead. Quickly back to Parker. Now Alexander, the point guard, number 12. He averages 19 points a game. Here's a key guy for Virginia, Junior Burrow has struggled with consistency this year, but he needs to have a solid game in the paint area. You know what Corey Alexander can do off the dribble, but Junior Burrow needs to do some damage in the paint. Seven nothing early on, 18.25 to go, first half of play. Here's Ted Jeffries, the center, back to Alexander. 
this tenacious man-to-man -man defense. You'll see it for the full 40 minutes. Parker for two. That's for three. They have changed it. He was across the line. And a most significant early game basket for Virginia. They are now one of two. Cincinnati has not missed. One of the things to keep an eye on is shot volume. Cincinnati typically gets 10 to 12 more shots than the opposition because they turn them over. If Virginia can maximize possession and make their good look, they'll stay in this game. Gary Nelson off the glass with the attempt at alley-oop. Virginia controls and the champs cut the lead. 7-3 right now. Alexander. Williford cuts across. Jeffries pops out, but the turnover is forced by Cincinnati. Van Exel, guarded by Alexander, goes by him, dishes to Nelson, who can't hang on. And that's the second Cincinnati turnover. For three, Alexander, and the lead is at one. Back-to-back -back three pointers propel the Cavaliers back into the thick of it. 7-6 nearing the 17-minute mark. Good match up here. Parker on Gibson. Rebound, Cincinnati. Loose ball. Nelson kicks it out. Gibson is stripped. Alexander dishes left side. Good. Virginia leads. Very aggressive in transition. That created by the turnover. Corey Alexander with the quick hands, and you must capitalize anytime you turn the Bearcats over. This is a Cincinnati team known for obtaining the turnovers, forcing them, not committing them. They've really been somewhat passive in their pressure, even after they scored the first three baskets of this game. They've been a little passive in terms of trapping in the half court. Corey Blunt. Gets it to fall. It's 9-8. There's no real heat here. Pressure on the basketball. Gibson laying in the gap, but not a lot of trapping, harassing pressure by Cincinnati to start the game. Williford. Jeffries, no. It was Williford, and that ball is out of bounds. It'll be Cincinnati's inbound. The Bearcats jump to a 7-0 lead. It's cut, but they still lead by one. some turnovers yourself. Corey Alexander for Virginia. Quick hands gets it away from Terrence Gibson and then finds Jason Williford streaking to the goal. 9-8 Cincinnati inbounds. No lineup changes during the timeout. Virginia won't make many. They go primarily with a seven-man outfit. You will see subs off the bench for Cincinnati. They are much deeper than are the Cavaliers. And there is a sub in the lineup now for Cincinnati. Lizelle Durden has come in, number 23. So he's joined by Van Exel, Blunt, Terry Nelson, and Eric Martin. Five-second count. Cornell Walt Parker at 6'6", really bothered Durden. He had about four inches on him, got him hemmed up on the sideline, and that was another defender and forced the turnover. Excellent work by Cornell Parker, who to me is another key for Virginia. He's a multi-dimensional player, can finish at the goal, and he's an excellent defender and rebound. Jeffries walk. Well, this is a Cincinnati team, as we said, not known for turning it over. They average only 14 a game. Already, Clark, four turnovers in the early goal. Mm -hmm. I think a little early game jitters both ways. Both teams trying to settle into a rhythm and get comfortable. And Cincinnati, again, maybe a little leery of Corey Alexander's ball handling and quickness, not really pressuring as hard as I've seen him pressure in the last couple of games. 9-8, Cincinnati leads it. Whistle and a foul called away from the wall on Virginia. Take a look at how Martin sits down in the post. There he is in the middle of your screen. He's almost eclipsed Jason Williford, who's forced to foul, and that is his second. That is also the second team foul. Now for Virginia, Doug Smith comes in. Don't hold him! Bostick is back in, or in the lineup now for Cincinnati. Lizelle Durden for three. Rebound, Martin comes down with it. Harris is on the baseline, and a whistle and a foul. Get the underside of the backboard, it would be Cincinnati's to inbound. Chris Havlicek is on the bench for Virginia. I thought for a moment he'd come in, he is not. Doug Smith has come in the lineup now, number 11. 
for the Cavaliers. Ian Alexander in the backcourt. Here's Van Exel. Off the mark. Rebound Jeffries. Dead Jeffries, the reading, leading rebounder for Virginia. And a check for the Cavaliers to reclaim the lead. That'll be a foul called on Curtis Bostick, the sophomore from Brockton, Mass. Well, you look at Curtis Bostick, a tremendous athlete. He is cut up like a diamond in terms of the lumps on his body. Well, well sculpted, I yeah, would say. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing extra there, but giving up a lot of size to Junior Burrow. Doug Smith, empty pass. The pump fake. Excellent move. Beautiful execution. Really important that Virginia maximize their half-court opportunities by throwing it inside to Burrow and Jeffries, and then they need those guys to convert when they get good looks in the paint. Cincinnati, on the other hand, has pretty much been a perimeter team these first few possessions. They need to try to look inside and get Blunt and Martin going a little bit in the paint area. There's a double team on Bostick. They kick it back to Martin. Rebound, Junior Burrow. And Virginia in transition. Cornell Parker takes it, kicks it back to Burrow. He'll take the jumper off the mark. Durden with the rebound for Cincinnati. 10-9, Virginia, 13-40 to go, first half. Van Exel, excellent pass. Penetrating dish. Van Exel very capable of not only getting his own, but also able to create, draw defenders, and give it up to Blunt. See, he draws three orange jerseys here. Knows somebody is loose. Nice cut by Blunt. He'll get himself to the line. Substitutions for Cincinnati. Lozell Durden and Eric Martin go out. Terrence Gibson is back in. And so also is Terry Nelson. And it'll be Jeffries and Parker along with Smith and Alexander. And Yuri Barnes, number 24, has come off the bench now for the Cavaliers. At the line, Corey Blunt, not a good free throw shooter. He averages 55% for the season. I saw Cincinnati back in December when they got blasted at Indiana. Blunt was not part of the team then simply because the NCAA was deciding whether or not they were going to restore eligibility because of a medical red shirt in junior college. And he's been back now for about 12 or 13 games and really has made this a different team because of his shot blocking and rebounding presence. He's made their pressure a lot more effective. There's the kick by Bostick. That Indiana loss is one of only four suffered by Cincinnati. They come in with a 26 and four mark and the number two seed. I haven't seen the, the emotion of the tenacity mm -hmm. that you expected to see. Exactly, and I'm a little curious as to why that is. Maybe, again, Cincinnati just thinking they can't afford to, to go all out in their pressure against Alexander because he's so good and quick with the ball. Tied at 10. Jeffries, strong move, shot not so good. And a rather vocal rebound of the <laughs> Plenty of running and groaning going on in the paint. Cincinnati's Van Exel kicks it back to Nelson, who has trouble hanging on again. Terry Nelson, who came up to my partner during the warm-ups and said, I am a stat sheet stuffer. Well, I told you, you've got to score some points. You've got to post some numbers to qualify as a stat sheet stuffer. Nelson is pretty much a defender and a rebounder and kind of keeps his teammates loose with his chatter. Subs getting ready to come back in for Cincinnati. Eric Martin re-enters the game and for Virginia Junior Burrow. And now number 21, Keith Gregor, will enter the lineup. Freshman from Cincinnati. And for Virginia number four, Junior Burrow. Well, you can see Cincinnati a little out of sync because they rely so much on their pressure defense to turn people over and get them in their transition game. And Virginia, again, tough defensively in the half court, not giving up many easy shots. Here comes Cincinnati on the run, but Virginia, good job of getting back defensively. Back it goes to Gibson for three. Got it. Darren Gibson, a 31% shooter from three-point range over the course of the season. He gets that one. He's had some kind of tournament thus far. Went for a career high, 25, in last week's second game. He's really shot the ball well. 10 of 13 in the first two tournament games. 
13-10. Alexander, too strong. Rebound, Virginia. Nice putback. Junior Burrow gets two. A one-point game, 13-12. Van Exel for three. Hit his first two shots. Hasn't hit anything since. 13-12 and a chance for Virginia to go back on top. A little casual play by Parker. Van Exel. Wonderful play. A little show and tell. You called it perfectly. Parker casual with the orange. And Van Exel stop, go, crossover to the cup. And he'll get one. Strong move by Nick Van Exel. And again, he is very explosive offensively because he can shoot the three. And he also is a guy that can create shots on the move. Ted Jeffries checks back in, replacing Yuri Barnes. Van Exel will go to the free throw line after the fourth team foul. That foul on Parker was his first person. Three point play for Van Exel. 11.33 to go, first half. The Bearcats of Cincinnati up by four. Well, Vern, last weekend after Virginia beat UMass in the second round, the players were in a post-game press conference when they heard what Cincinnati was doing to New Mexico State. Now, Corey Alexander told me that it was a little scary to hear a score like 39 to 8, but Virginia is very happy with the way that they have prepared for Cincinnati. They took a page out of the UAB playbook, or rather in the practice book, and they decided to practice with six players on defense this week. UAB beat Cincinnati one time this season, and they played them tough another time. Vern? All right, Andrew. Seems to have worked. So far, so good. One of the keys to handling the pressure is, again, good, solid play with the ball, but also not going into the trapping zones, which are along the sideline. Eric Martin gets the... Uh, feed from Van Exel and it's 18-12 since the opening 7-0 run this is the largest Cincinnati lead here's Smith has Van loose underneath and how about the block by Blunt whoa Van Exel put back at both ends Corey Blunt blocked the shot got the stuff one of the dangers against a team like Cincinnati is their spurtability. Because they're so strong defensively, they deny you shots and make you pay at the other end. Junior Burrow counters for Virginia. It's a six-point lead. One of the ways you get Cincinnati out of that racehorse style, you must convert. That slows them down a little bit because they've got to take it out of the net. Blunt and Martin, Van Exel, Gibson, and Gregor on the court now for Cincinnati. Here's Blunt. Back to Gibson. No. Virginia chases it down. Junior Burrow gets in the hands of Corey Alexander. He's guarded by Gibson. Kicks it back to Doug Smith. Jeffries. Short. Cincinnati. Two on three. Van Exel puts it up anyway. And they got Gibson shutting off underneath. Take a look at Corey Blunt wiping it away and keeping it. Now he pushes it ahead. Cincinnati has numbers. They're not going to get the initial thrust, but in transition, Blunt in the middle of his screen sends it home on the follow. Great work by Corey Blunt at both ends of the floor. Gibson with a foul, his first. That's the third team foul. Cornell Parker back in the lineup for Virginia, number five. Back it goes to Alexander. Martin with a rebound. Nine twenty-three remaining. Winner of this one gets either North Carolina or Arkansas. They need a game two here later tonight. There's the reach around by Williford. Shot clock at 20. Van Exel. Gibson by Parker, short with a shot. And that will be Cincinnati's ball. Near the conclusion of tonight's game, Clark and I'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. 20 to 14, 8.51 remaining first half. Burn one first. 
Clark Kellogg here at the Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Terry Nelson to Gibson. Gibson gets the follow. Nice job. Whoa. Terrific mid-air adjustment. Long missed shots lead to long rebounds. And Gibson able to get his own and get to the cup. Take a look at him hanging in the air, avoiding Jeffries. Actually slithered beneath Jeffries and got it up and down. Corey Blunt comes back in the lineup down number 44, and Keith Gregor will get a rest for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Well, you see Bob Huggins shuffling people in and out, looking to keep all of his troops fresh so they can continue to keep pretty good pressure on you for 40 minutes. Bob Huggins, by the way, has promised to shave his head if the team gets back to the final four. Actually, his players have promised to shave his head for him, so that's going to work. <laughs> well, that would be fun to watch. <laughs> back it goes to Williford. Good ball movement. Corner three. Beautiful. Good stuff. Here's Van Exel at the other end. Alexander, good job of getting back. Blunt's rebound effort, not quite good enough. You question that shot by Van Exel, one on two. But again, you typically get offensive rebounds if you miss that kind of shot. Cincinnati did, just didn't convert. Off balance jumper is no good. Terry Nelson quickly out to Blunt. 22-17 with 7.30 to go, first half of play. That's off of Virginia, Jason Williford. And it'll be Cincinnati's ball. 22-17, first half of play. And then he quickly swings it to Alexander for the wide open three. We call that the pass before the pass. And Virginia three of four from three-point range now. We're at the Meadowlands Arena. We have 7-14 remaining in the first half of play. Virginia fell behind 7-0 at the outset of the game, stormed back to claim a lead, then fell behind by eight. But through the use of the threes, like you just saw, they climbed back in it. They now trail the heavily favored Cincinnati Bearcats by five, 22-17. Again, Virginia is a pretty solid defensive team, so you're not going to get much easy in your half-court game. You've got to be patient, and you must dribble penetrate to draw defenders to get high-quality shots. They kick it back out to Gibson. Van Exel, who has hit only one of his last eight shots, the shot clock at four. And he is now one of nine since hitting his first two. That ball rejected. Then saved, it's on the line. It'll be Virginia ball. Oh, no. beg your pardon. Cincinnati ball. This is FedEx in reverse. <laughs> Nelson sees this one go behind him as Virginia doing a nice job stopping that shot by Terry Nelson and Cincinnati dominating the glass, but it's not really showing up on the scoreboard as Virginia, by virtue of the three-point shot, able to maintain pretty good contact here. Cincinnati is two of ten from three-point range. There's a foul called away from the ball. Well, Nick Van Exel looking to be a little more offensive-minded than he was in the first and second round tournament games. Really has to start now thinking about, I don't have it going, so I need to maybe get involved with distributing the ball to my teammates. He's taking a couple of questionable shots, and you can live with it when you're making it. You can almost sense, though, Clark, he hit those first two, and you can see his, his confidence is almost palpable. <laughs> and then, bingo, bottom fell out. Well, he's a streaky shooter at best. Gibson, one move too many, foul on Gibson. That'll be his second foul and the team fifth foul on Cincinnati. Terrence Gibson will give way now to Lazelle Durden, number 23. This young man averaged 39 points per game in high school, his senior year. That's filling it up. Talking yesterday, but he's one of the fewer, few fewer shooters that Bob Huggins has recruited at Cincinnati. Underneath, off of Junior Burrow. Well, that was the right idea. That pass was hot but catchable. 
Cincinnati one of its last 11 field goals. And again, a lot of those shots are pretty much challenged perimeter shots. They really aren't getting anything of high quality in their half-court game. The Cincinnati team that averaged 92 points in the first two games, and they've got 22, and they've been stuck here for a while. That one goes. How about the elevation? Yeah. I mean, he just jumped over his defender there. I think Martin's got to touch it a little more. I really do. I mean, this guy's shooting 67 percent, and he scored 19 points a game in your first two, and he hasn't had many touches here in the first half. Especially, I think, Clark, when other guys are struggling to get him involved. That ball knocked away by Terry Nelson, and then the jump hook by Jeffries goes down. When he's under control and in his range, he's an effective scorer. Jeffries with four. He averages 10. He's having a career year, 10 points a game, eight boards, plus 50% shooting. 24-19. Tough matchup for Jeffries here. Martin. Good defensive job by Jeffries, and he hurries downfield. There's incidental contact and no foul call. Now, Corey Alexander, who's been limited to one three-point basket. That was early in this game. He averages 19 points. They've had Van Exel in his face most of the first half. Good job of backing in. The tip is too strong, and Van Exel has it. Now, will he pull up and take the jumper? No. They spot up for the three. Durden, no. Back to Van Exel for three. No. Blunt. Rejected by Welford, and Virginia has it. Nick Van Exel with the foul. Well, you take a look at what Cincinnati has done. No wonder they're dominating the boards. They're making plenty of rebounds available with that kind of shooting. And they're an excellent team on the offensive glass because they've got good quickness and tenacity at every position. So they get an awful lot of second shot tries. Doug Smith comes back in the lineup. He's a senior guard from Fayetteville, Tennessee. This is his 117th game, and he has never started. <laughs> Number 11. Another turnover. That's seven on Virginia. Van Exel. Durden. Got it. Keith Gregor's also come in the lineup for Cincinnati, and the lead is back to seven. Cincinnati's so quick with their hands inside. If you're a big guy in the low post, you need to keep the ball in your chest and shoulder area where you've got the most strength. If you bring it down, they'll strip you. Cincinnati defense forces 21 turnovers per game. Virginia now has committed eight. When we set out to design the new Geo Prism, the possibilities were endless. Then, step by step, we built a car that's as well thought out as it is well engineered. Once you see the end result, we think you'll agree. It all came together beautifully. Get to know the newest Geo, Geo Prism, at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Scaled it, jumped it, skied it, surfed it. Rode it, dove it, flew it, crashed it. Never slammed it, never guzzled it. You've never done nothing till you do diet do. Did it. Dug it. Savored it. Relished it. Hey, man, let's do this again. It's tough to keep ahead of the competition. You gotta move fast to stay on top. You need two-day two priority mail. In two. two days, we deliver two. two pounds for only two ninety. If the competition's new rates are just two. too much, visit your post office to send two-day priority mail or call 1-800-THE-USPS for your free starter kit. We deliver for you. Just a hoot and a holler. Hey everybody, I'm Pat O'Brien, and on the other side of the river here in New York City in our New York studios, along with Mike Francesa and Digger Phelps, just to remind you, this is a tournament. We have basketball going on in the western part of this country up in Seattle. You're looking at George Washington University and Michigan, Michigan in Mays. George Washington with the ball right now. Two to nothing very early in this game. Remind you that at halftime, we're going to give you a big taste of this West Regional semifinal game with Jim Nansen 
Billy Packer. I send you back now to Vern Lundquist and Clark Kellogg. Vern. 325 remaining in the first half. There's the entry pass to Blunt. The turnaround jumper is good. And this is the largest lead of the ball game now at nine points, 28 and 19. But it has been cold shooting by both clubs thus far. Virginia, nice one touch pass underneath to Jeffries. Junior Burrow, beg your pardon, number four. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to be strong with it and go aggressively to the goal. Virginia has had opportunities to convert, but I don't think they've converted a high enough percentage of those good looks inside. Pretty good struggle by Blunt and Burrow, and they're going to get Blunt. Blunt with a little lower body root canal there picks up the foul. <laughs> Field goal percentage both below 40. Cincinnati 3 of 2 of 12 on three point attempts, but they have converted 12 fast break points. Van Exel hit his first two field goals and is one of 11 since then. It's been a struggle, but he is a streaky shooter at best, and he has the green light, which is somewhat dangerous for a streaky shooter. He'll knock two down and figure he's on the roll and then do what Van Exel has done in missing his last 11. One for one, one and one, and uh, Burrow misses it. That's the first free throw attempt for Virginia in the ball game. 28-21 with 2.36 to go, first half. Dirt pops out. Now they work the ball over left side. Underneath, Nelson. Got two, and he'll shoot one. A little pick and slip. Take a look at Nelson just leaves. Van Exel waits for him to make his cut. No help on the backside for Virginia until it's too late. Junior Burrow guilty of the foul. But that was an excellent read by Terry Nelson. He doesn't give you many points. He gives you defense and intelligence. And he saw a sign of his intelligence there as he felt the pick, felt the defenders, and just left them and got the easy layup. He is an aspiring nightclub comic. <laughs> not an aspiring professional free throw shooter. <laughs> He's hitting 55% from the free throw line. Bob Huggins, fourth year at Cincinnati. This is a team that is 55 and nine over the last two years. And they feel somewhat jaded. They don't feel like the country gives them the amount of respect that they've deserved. Well, they're certainly on their way to earning it with the victory here tonight. Alexander still limited to three points. Going to be a foul on Cincinnati and on Corey Blunt in particular. That'll send Yuri Barnes, a sophomore from Richmond, to the free throw line. Neither one of these teams are terrific free throw shooting teams. They're both below 70. Right, right. Both of these teams could do a little better at the stripe. But sometimes you can make up for that with the three point shot or by virtue of getting a number of easy baskets in transition, which is what Cincinnati typically does. Hasn't been a particularly well-played game so far. Well, it's kind of like a bad bowl of oatmeal. A little lumpy. I just sit here and serve them up. I mean, you know, <laughs> you dish it out. 2-0-1 to go. 30-22, to 22, Barnes will get another one. Well, I think if Virginia can keep it in a margin of five to eight points, if not better, they'd have to feel pretty good because they've not converted inside with all the opportunities they've had. And they've um, pretty much been solid at this end of the floor. There's another Cincinnati turnover. That's their sixth. Jumper short. And they're going to get Yuri Barnes over the top. No. Yes, they did. Coming up at the half, the road to the final four with Pat O'Brien, Mike Francesa, and Digger Phelps. And we'll also go out to the West Coast where the top-ranked Michigan Wolverines having outlasted UCLA last week for taking on George Washington. I think most people think they're going to have a march now into the mm -hmm. into the final four. Yeah, I would agree. I, Easy march. 
I, I feel like they're the team that has a great chance to win it all simply because they've got all the pieces. They've got size and experience off the bench. They've got tremendous talent. The skeptics feel like that team does not play at a high level on a consistent basis. Are you a skeptic? No, no. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of theirs for a while simply because I think that they've got enough material and they're going to use that skepticism that exists within the media as fuel for their fire. And I think they're going to make a serious run at winning it all. Durden tries to save it. He's down. And at the other end, Cincinnati gets it back, and Durden's back on the floor. Really a good effort, but then a poor process procedure for Virginia. 31-23. Virginia did lead by one. They trail right now by eight. They fell behind early on the game, 7-0. Van Exel hit his first two shots, one of his last 11. Shot clock at 12. Van Exel dishes back in the corner. Durden, no. Martin for the strong rebound, and it's knocked away by Doug Smith. Cincinnati will throw the ball in. 45 seconds to go. And now I have an opportunity to play for the last shot. Offensive rebounding, a huge advantage for Cincinnati this half. And now they get a chance to max out the clock and get the last shot of the half. Martin has it taken away. Oh, what a dandy job by Alexander. And that is taken away at the other end, but Van Exel's on the line. Yeah, that was a nifty bit of ball handling by Alexander to momentarily avoid the pressure, and then Van Exel not giving up on the play came up from behind and knocked it out. Virginia has to try to max it out here and get the last shot of the half and assure themselves of not going into the locker room down double digits. I think psychologically, that's very important for the Cavaliers. What you want to do here is run it down to about eight or nine, get it into the hands of a shot creator, preferably Corey Alexander, spread your floor, and try to give him room to go one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Alexander to Jeffries. And it's rejected by Gregor, who is called for the foul. With 8.9 seconds remaining for a Well, he got an awful lot of the orange there, but... Sure did. May have come in and made contact with the body. Substitution now for Virginia. Sean Wilson, number 52, is going to enter the game for Jeffries after Jeffries shoots the free throws. Jeffries, 59% free throw shooter for the season. Cavaliers with two or four from the free throw line. Not a decided advantage for Cincinnati. They are three of six. Now, Sean Wilson comes in, 6'11", 241-pound junior, and he replaces Jeffries. Well, they're going to try to clear it for Nick Van Exel here and let him beat Alexander. Boy wants to try to keep Van Exel in front. Alexander, no, the basket will not count. That's the end of the first half with our score. Cincinnati leading 31-24. Adam Ryan, Mike Francesa, and Digger Phelps, along with the road to the final four at this word and a message from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive cover. CBS, right now, let's take you out for a taste of Michigan. George Washington, 15-2. to two. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Enjoy this. We'll see you in a minute. George Washington trailing 15 to 2, 0 for 10 from the floor. Bill Brigham with the basketball, scoring the only points on two free throws. All five starters for Michigan have scored. Jim, Michigan holds people to 41% shooting. And I think what's happening right now to GW is they're seeing some people that are just so much bigger than what they're used to playing with. 
Oh, good, good help on the press. Vaughn Jones scored, and now he gives it up to nice Holland. Game. And four quick ones for GW. Jones first, and then Holland. Nice move by Mike Jarvis to say, hey, I can't play these guys half court. Let's try a little full court. Oh, they almost got another turnover. They wanted the traveling call, but instead of foul on Jones. Game one tonight, Michigan against the 12 seed, GW. Later, Vanderbilt and Temple from the Kingdom. Two A-10 teams playing out west. Vaughn Jones, who committed that foul. The Matha High School player. Third leading scorer in that tremendous history of that school. Nice lob. And to Jimmy King, who gets right into the face and talks a little trash to Sonny Hovland after he dunked over it. Well, that wasn't the same as putting back a missed shot, but it was the same combination. Jalen Rose, Jimmy King. Here we see Jalen putting up what is a pass, not a shot this time. Jimmy King just catches it, distributes it to the basket, and then wants to talk a little bit to Holland. This is the problem a lot of people across the country have with the Michigan Wolverines. Well, one of the things can happen in a game like this is all of a sudden you think it's over instead of keeping that concentration that you had early. And Michigan came out very focused. And they can't afford to just change that attitude just because they had a lead early on. GW now settling down fairly nicely. It's a small lineup on the floor, though, compared to Michigan. Sony Holland trying to challenge the position with Riley. Now they swing it around. Pearsall will take the leap and leaner. Nice tip. No block out there. And you can see GW trying to press full court zone pressure after all made baskets. And King drives past Holland. Oh, good strip. Jones on the strip. They have the numbers. On the wing, Searles will pull up for it off the glass, and suddenly they're within seven. It was 15-2, now 17-10 Michigan. Jim, beautiful catch, and he faked off the catch. They've changed the, the entire complexion of the game by changing their defensive strategy. Going full court. And they're doing this with Dare on the bench. He has not been a factor in this game. One rebound and one foul for Yinka Dare, the freshman. Well, Jim, I think the case for that is that Mike Jarvis realized he had to play half court at a time with Dare out there. Now with a smaller lineup, he's going to full court pressure. Trying to score some offense off his defense. Vaughn Jones came in off the bench and has given this team a real lift. Here he is, three-point shot, very flat. Yep. Air ball out of bounds. Well, 1991 was the year that Mike Jarvis took over. Can you believe it? The year Michigan won the championship here at the Kingdom, 89. GW was 1 and 27. Jim, that was under John Kuster, a North Carolina grad, and the next year he kind of turned things around, but they decided to make a change, so. A nucleus had been started. GW's entire focus as to how they were going to run their program. Atlantic 10 changed, and they are now in pretty solid shape. Sony Holland called on the reach in. That's the seventh team foul against the Colonials, so it'll put Michigan into a one and one with Jawan Howard. Awful early for one and one. You know, Jim, one of the things about this young man is kind of interesting. One of the best defensive players in the United States for his size. And I was looking over the stats, and it kind of jumped out at me. On the year, he has only blocked 12 shots. Now, when you have an outstanding low post defender who only has 12 blocks, that means he's a position type player, not quick off the feet to try to block the shot. The players should catch it, turn, and shoot, not worrying about the So in the time you're watching this game, George Washington University trying to climb back into the game with the Incadare on the bench. Michigan leads, though. 19 to 10 and we'll keep you up to date on that ball game all through the evening your game is about to start again cincinnati up 31 to 24. enjoy the second half here on cbs we'll see you later with the power of mountain dew 
before we start the second half, let's check in quickly with Andrea Joyce. All right, Vern, as Clark suggested earlier, Virginia feels like they are in decent shape being able to keep the game this close at halftime. They are concerned, though, that Cincinnati has had too many second chances at baskets, and they want their guards to be a lot more aggressive about getting those long rebounds. Back to you, Vern. As a matter of fact, Andrea, just to underline that point, 15 offensive rebounds for Cincinnati to 7 for, uh, for uh, Virginia. And that shows up in the number of shots Cincinnati has been able to get up. 37 versus 27 for Virginia. Jeffries and Parker. Corey Alexander who had six first half points has that ball stripped by Gibson. Here's Van Exel at the other end. And the shot is too strong. The put down is no good. Rebound Virginia. Van Exel is one for his last 11. And three for 13 in the ball game. Now. He lost control of that ball and got distracted by the defender. Van Exel hit his first two shots and then things went south. And then he went one for ten. Take a look again. Remember the white balls are missed shots. The orange ones are converted shots. So he was one for seven from behind the arc. One of three in the paint area. So a tough shooting half for Nick Van Exel. Eric Martin with that last foul. Cornell Parker along the baseline. Cal State Bakersfield undefeated this year. They're 32 and 0. And they make it into the championship game in Springfield, Massachusetts. That will be televised tomorrow afternoon on CBS. Terry Nelson guilty of the foul. His second team first in this half. And Jason Williford goes to the line. He is a 76% free throw shooter. Best among the five starters for Virginia. Whoa. Martin stepped in a little I soon, thought so. I thought. Yeah, Martin was right in his face. It was a two-shot foul, so there was no need for him to be moving at all. Now he got a warning from Dave Hall. Mm -hmm. Well, the shot went down, so it's a move point right now. Gets the ball. The lead is five, 31-26. A Virginia team that opened the season undefeated for 11 games, including a win over Duke, and everybody in the country climbed on the bandwagon when they lost four of their next five <laughs> people fell off in tons five second count well you have to be alert to that count you can't just hang on to the ball that certainly wasn't Eric Martin's fault though none of his teammates getting open and making themselves available to receive and you know, we talked about how Cincinnati really harasses you and pressures you for 40 minutes. Offensive foul, no basket. Nice job by Terry Nelson to step inside and take the charge, but I haven't seen that tenacious, in-your-face attitude that Cincinnati's known for. Jeffries to Burrow, and Nelson steps in. Actually may have slid in and under Burrow, but did a good job of confiscating convincing the officials otherwise 31 26 lead is five Gibson finds Van Exel and he is shadowed by Corey Alexander Martin turnaround jumper excellent shot. he needs more touches this Cincinnati team thrives on turning you over and getting transition baskets. And if they don't do that, they have a tendency to struggle in the half court because they really don't have pure shooters. So unless they can throw it inside to Martin and Blunt, they're a team that's going to struggle from the perimeter. Oh, oh, works hard for the basket. And that nice to soft touch pays off. Well, he knows he can get his shot off on Martin. See, Martin gets off the floor quickly. He's strong, but he's given up about 20 pounds and about two plus inches to Burrow. So I would expect Junior Burrow to really salivate when he catches it in the paint and get busy. Lead is five, 33-28. Gibson, whoa. That Axel shot again will not go. He's one of eight now from three-point range. Williford. Wonderful shot. 33-30. Now, if you're Cincinnati, you need a good shot, and I think you've got to probe inside and try to throw it inside to Eric Martin and see if he can get to work for you. 
or Corey Brunt, one of those two. This foul is called on Van Exel. Cincinnati hit four of its first six shots, then six of the next 27, and four of the last 10. They have grown frigid. Yeah, that paints a pretty dramatic picture. And again, in large part due to their inability to get the easy baskets they're used to by forcing turnovers. That last foul was not called on Van Exel. It was called on Gibson, his 30s on the bench. There's Van Exel. This time it's on Van Exel. And he just got teed up, too. Put him on the driving range. <laughs> Here you take a look. He's going to leave his feet trying to make the pass. And I can understand his disappointment. I mean, Cornell Parker turned around on him. As, as Van Exel made contact, the defender has to be stationary. Cornell Parker was turning around, and then because of the demonstrative way in which he reacted, Nick Van Exel picked up the tee. And the tee counts as his third personal. Mm -hmm. That's right. Alexander gets them both. The lead is one. Jason Williford will inbound. And Virginia has a chance to reclaim the lead at last held at 10 to 9. Alexander with the entry pass to Jeffries. Got it. Dandy bit of passing. Excellent angle for that pass by Alexander. Lean to the baseline side and put it right where Jeffries could catch it and get to work. Away from the bow on Jeffries, I believe, number 42. There you go. Nose to nose. Voice to voice. And Jeffries with the smile. Everything is good nature. Cincinnati now in danger of losing their poise. Why? Because they haven't played the way they they want to play. They want to turn you over. They haven't been able to do that. They pounded the offensive glass, and yet they're down by a point, and that is frustrating to them right now. They've got to regroup and regain their composure here. They trail by one, 16, 18 remaining. Van Exel. Dishes to Blunt, got it. Great catch. That was a hot pass in tight quarters. Good catch and immediate finish by Blunt. Corey Blunt is the first man in double digits. He's got 11. Pass from Alexander. Nice scoop shot by Williford. You know, you and I were talking during the day about what would Virginia have to do to beat this team. Well, they had to handle the pressure, but they needed a complimentary guy to step up and give them some type of production. And so far in the second half, Williford has been a key man for them. Martin. And he'll shoot two. Martin has tremendous hops, the ability to elevate and shoot over people. I mean, he really bounces off of the floor. And they're still jawjacking in there. We're going to talk about it a little bit. The comedian and Ted Jeffries huddled up with Dave Libby and Dave Hall. Now, Junior Burrow, number four, comes back in. Yuri Barnes will get a rest, and things have calmed down. There's a little push and shove. You know, Terry Nelson, aspiring to be a comedian, doesn't want to give up center stage here. <laughs> well, they're still going at each other verbally. Well, the key here is to not back down, but also realize that you don't need to talk to stand up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can be composed and not willing to take anything, but you don't have to respond to the verbal spawn. I mean, it's much easier for me to say that right here than it is for those guys out there that are actually hearing 
the antagonistic verbiage. Van Exel was trying to sneak into the free throw line, but it is Corey Blunt who was fouled. Van Exel was he was he was hanging around the free throw line. And now we're going to have a an official head to the scores table and try to get the wrinkles out of this thing. It's Eric Martin and not Blunt. That's what the deal is. It was it was four right. instead it of forty four. That's, right. That's right. So Martin, who had gone, <laughs> it happened bed. so long ago, we yeah. forgot who was supposed to be at the line. Everybody got a second breath, or some of them did. Now Martin will shoot two. He gets one more, and this will tie it up at 15-32 remaining in the ball game. We are tied at 36 with 1532 to go in the game. They meet next in what should be a terrific matchup here at the Meadowlands. Yeah, pretty much contrasting styles. Carolina with size and depth. Arkansas with speed and depth. So it should be interesting when those two hook up in a bit. Burrow takes the jumper and has it fall. He's got 10. You know, I talked to Corey Alexander before the game, and I said, are you going to try to beat the pressure yourself? He said, when possible, but we need guys, other guys to step up and help me ball handling, and we need a strong night from Junior Burrow. It's been strong enough so far. Mm -hmm. Rebound Virginia, and a chance for their largest lead of the ball game. Burrow again, takes the jumper. Here he comes. He knows his shot can't be bothered. And in heat, when he operates in that 12 to 14 foot range, he's got a sweet stroke. Down by seven at the half. They have outscored Cincinnati by 11 in the first six minutes of the second half. Bob Huggins is going back to his bench. They're going to get Eric Martin back in the lineup. Axel tries to pop out. See, they really don't have a perimeter shooter other than Dirt, and Virginia knows that, so they're going to really try to step into his space. Here's Van oh! Axel. Oh! It still won't go. Rebound. Up and not in. Attacking the pressure. Here you see it from the high angle. That's Parker gets it centered to Burrow. Excellent control here. One bounce, pull up, mark it up. Let's go play D. There's the 11 point margin we just spoke about 16 to 5 in this half Van Exel is now 3 of 15 and Nelson misfires on the free throw there's Van Exel hit his first two shots 1 of 12 since then Loose ball, Virginia. What a struggle, and it's Virginia ball. Boy, they're letting them hoop down inside, Arthur. I think they're going to turn around that call, Vern. Here you take a look. Burrow smothered by Blunt and Bostic. Loose ball, bodies flying. And then there's Parker stepping in, knocking it away from Blunt. Good turnaround on that call by the official. Bostic muscles for the shot. Bloodies his lip, and he'll shoot free throws. Curtis Bostic, the sophomore from Rocky Marciano's hometown, Brockton, Mass. Looked like a brawler then. Yeah, he certainly did. You know, he was a state champion kickboxer. I can school. imagine. With that body and athleticism, I tell you what, if you're going into the paint tonight, as we say on the playground, you must come correct. <laughs> You teach me something every week. Which means get in there strong and businesslike. You must come correct. That's right. Come correct. Leave. No, 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 oh. no, no. Come correct. You can't dress it up. No, huh? you can't. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. 40-37, <laughs> Virginia leads. The number six seed against the number two, Bostic with the steal. Dirt pulls up, takes the jump, and hits it. Strong move. Good balance. 
so the two foot jump stop gave him a good base to finish. 40 39. Parker at the other end. Offensive foul on Cornell Parker. And it was Bostic who stood his ground. Bostic said he doesn't feel good after a game if he's not sore. And we've seen twice now on the offensive end, he got in there and stuck his nose in. And here he gives up that twisted up body to draw the charge on Parker. And from that look, seemed like a good call. 40-39, a chance for Cincinnati to reclaim the lead with 13.25 remaining. Only the fourth team these two teams have ever met last time was 31 years ago. Van Exel. Blunt. 13 points for Blunt. And the Bearcats back on top. Foul on Durden. You can't drop a sweeter dime than this. Penetrate and then lay it around the defender right into the lap of Corey Blunt. And the big fella turns it over inside. Terrence Gibson checks back in now for Cincinnati, replacing Roselle Durden. And Doug Smith is in the lineup now for Virginia, the senior. Number 11 will inbound. Finds Burrow. Alexander tries to pop out. They've got Gibson on him. Jeffrey blows by Blunt, but misfires on the ball. And a 41-40 score. Jeff Jones liked that aggressive move. The execution a little faulty, but the idea, just what Virginia needs. Van Exel appealing to the crowd to give them a little vocal stimulus here. Too short. Good harassment. Now here's Smith at the other end for Virginia. Stolen and reobtained by Alexander. Nifty play. Here's Van Exel. And he misses again. If they said they weren't worried about Van Exel's shooting woes before the game, they certainly are now. Point blank range. Look at this play by Blunt to dive and get it ahead. And then Doug Smith continues to chase down the ball. And Bob Huggins can't believe that one didn't go down. And Nick Van Exel is going to have a chance to sit down for a moment. Third team All-American. Point guard who's averaging 18 points a game. Sometimes you can try a little too hard. I mean, Nick has struggled in the first two tournament games. He's an 18, 19 point per game score. Feeling maybe that his team needs him to produce some points tonight and hasn't gotten it going here tonight. Season field goal percentage of 39% tonight. He is three of 16 and for the tournament under 20% now. He had seven points against Coppin State three against New Mexico State. And they really didn't need his numbers in those two games because Eric Martin and Terrence Gibson were carrying the offensive load. But from the start tonight, it appeared to me that Nick Van Exel was really looking to be aggressive scoring the ball, got his first two to go. And since then, it's been a real struggle. 41 all with 11.57 to go. Cincinnati, a Final Four team a year ago. Losers to Michigan by only four, 76-72. Martin, nice dish. And Gibson gets the layup, 43-41. Dribble penetration always creates problems, especially when you get into the paint area. Good swing. Alexander for three. Here. Beautiful find from the middle to the weak side. Alexander with 11 points and Virginia with a one-point edge. See, that kind of look available because Cincinnati is so ball-conscious defensively. They really overload to the ball side. So if you get it to the weak side, you should get good looks. Bostic tries to cut. The ball is kicked out of bounds by Cornell Parker. The three-point play by Corey Alexander has put Virginia up by one. <laughs>
My father grew up in the Depression. I grew up in the 60s. He fought a war and, and I didn't. All we ever saw in each other were what were the differences. I think we fought because we believed there'd always be time to take things. Kansas beat the Hoosiers at the Hoosier Dome during the regular season. And that should be a day. You take a look at those four teams. You've got a what? A one and a three right. versus a one and a two. So, so far, the NCAA selection committee looking very good in how they seeded the teams and how things have turned out to this point. Van Exel is back in. Meanwhile, of the game out in Seattle, look at Michigan and George Washington. 35 33 at the half. No wonder the skeptics still abound. <laughs> <laughs> they are abounding all over. <laughs> Yeah, Michigan at one point seemed to be in full control. I think we saw a score of 15 to 2. Right. Van Exel. Trying to find that shooting touch again. He'll dish it to Blunt. And it doesn't go. Rebound. Martin with the putback. So often rebounding is about the second effort. And Martin's so quick off his feet that he's able to make that second jump before anybody reacts to him. Eric Martin of Cincinnati guilty of the foul. That is his third. The Bearcats in a struggle. They lead by one. They led by seven at the half. But Virginia outscored them on a 16 to five run to take a four point lead here in the second half. And now Virginia has a tie, has a chance trailing by one to go back into the lead. Corey Alexander at the line, the leading scorer for the Cavaliers. He has 11. And it stays at that mark. And on the front end of the one and one, Virginia on the misfire stays behind. Cincinnati's Nick Van Exel, three of 16 from the field after hitting his first two. He's got the ball right now. To his credit, though, the last couple of times he's tried to dish the ball on penetration. Corey Blunt gets two more. And it's a three-point Cincinnati lead. Nice pass. Whoa! Get it to the middle, turn and see what you've got, and then find the open guy and get to the right. Virginia refuses to fall back. They've never trailed in double digits. And we have not seen the intensity from Cincinnati that we expected tonight. And I think part of that intensity is, is due to their defense, but also when you get going offensively, I think that can soup you up in terms of intensity. Get it to the middle. Great look by Jeffries. I mean, he caught it in turn, saw what he had, and Yuri Barnes made it all work. Now number four, Junior Burrow checks back in. Yuri Barnes picks up his third foul and heads to the bench. And that is also the seventh team foul, so Cincinnati is at the line. You know, Vern, the point you made is a good one about Cincinnati lacking that intensity that they showed, especially in the first two games in the tournament. But part of that intensity is fueled as they turn you over and get three or four consecutive baskets and really get you on their heels. They haven't been able to get you on your heels. They really haven't been able to do that, so it's been more of a grinded-out type of an affair. Well, this is a Cincinnati team that in its first two games won by an average of 32 points and was in the 90s both times. Mm -hmm. And here they are sitting on a 49-46 lead with 9.25 to go. Meadowlands Arena, the Eastern Regional Semifinal. This foul is called on Terry Nelson, number 33. Just to recap for you, Cincinnati jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Virginia came back and claimed a lead of 10 to 9. Then the uh, Bearcats extended the lead once they'd reobtained it to as many as eight points. They were up by seven at the half. But Bob Huggins' team outscored 16 to 5 in the opening moments of the second half. Fell back by four. And they now lead by three. It's kind of a teeter talk. And now it stays at 49-46. Well, that's two front ends of one and one on back-to-back -back possessions that Virginia has not capitalized on. A Virginia team that has a club is hitting 65% for the season. From the free throw line. Van Exel pops it for three. The slump has been stymied for the moment. And the lead is six for the Cincinnati Bearcats. 
Double down on Jason Wilford. Take a look at Van Exel. Just going to back off behind the screen. A little brush screen by Blunt. Now see, Alexander goes behind the screen right there, and that gives Van Exel the space he needs to drain that three. At the other end of the court, it was Gibson defensively who knocked it into Jason Williford and off of him. 17 Virginia turnovers. And Van Exel. In the corner, gets it back. 8.20 remaining, 52-46. Oh. <laughs> Corey Blunt got the roll. Blunt's got 17 points, and the lead is eight. This is as large. Well, it was a nine-point lead at one point in the first half. Cornell Parker. Another turnover. As soon as they get across the timeline. He's feeling it now. Nick Van Exel back to back triple. For April 3rd on CBS. with 14 points and Cincinnati on a 14 to 2 run they're up by 11. Well they average nine more field goal attempts than the opposition because they turn you over and they go buffet style on the offensive glass plenty of second shots that's been pretty much the difference for Cincinnati in addition to Nick Van Exel with the back-to-back -back threes. Burst. Too strong. Got his own rebound. Excellent effort. Junior Burrow, he's got 15 points to lead all Virginia scores. Well, you called it strong work on the offensive glass, and I've said this before, but when you shoot it inside, if you miss, you should be the guy that has the first chance to get it because you know how the ball's going to come off based on how it's come off your hands. Man, Exel, that's for two. Well, you said it. He is really streaky. Yeah, he's very streaky. He made his first two, then he missed just about everything between. Now he's made it his last three out of four, including a couple of threes. 59-48. We near the six-minute mark. Back it goes to Williford. Off the glass and in. Nine points, Cincinnati Edge. Winner of this game gets either North Carolina or Arkansas. They meet here. 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one. A steal by Williford. Corey Alexander, too strong. Williford. Oh, my. Whoa, what an effort. <laughs> Never quit on it, young fellas out there watching. Never give up on the play. Williford made the steal and then gets the second shot. Williford with 12 points, 59-52. The lead is seven. In the corner, back it comes to Eric Martin. Five ten to go in regulation. Shot clock is down to ten. Van Exel wanted a foul, didn't get one. Virginia. Williford. Parker for three. Rebound Martin of Cincinnati. Foul on Corey Alexander. We've got the Arkansas North Carolina coming up here. And out in Seattle, the second game tonight will be Temple against Vanderbilt. 
And in the West, it's Michigan and George Washington at the half. Michigan, the team that defeated Cincinnati in the semifinals of the Final Four last year, will be sending this audience out west to see the conclusion of that game as soon as this one is over. Gibson at the line, no, missed the front end of the one and one. 59 52. Quickly out to Van Exel from Corey Blunt. Got to get a little cute. Yeah, was looking to make a spectacular play and lost the basketball in a two on situation, two on one situation. You want to make the simple play here, Van Exel, trying to get tricky and clever and loses the orange. Turnovers now 18 to 14. Good defensive job by Gibson. Here's Burrow. No. Martin rebound. Points off turnovers. Cincinnati leading. That was eight rebounds for Eric Martin. 350 to go. And Jeffries. And it's Jeffries with the foul. Yuri Barnes comes back in with his three fouls. Jeffries, who just picked up his third, will get a rest. And Bostic goes to the free throw line. Jason Williford instead. Well, the Southeast Conference has done quite well. Mm -hmm. All the number one seeds are still active. And you look at what Kentucky has done. They have just drummed their opposition. Until tonight, Cincinnati had drummed its opposition. This is the 11th Cincinnati Steel. Boy, that's a rally-wrecking possession because Virginia had numbers there, and Nick Van Exel just cleverly anticipated where Smith was going with it. Alexander, no. Van Exel rebound. I will show you what I've learned from you. There'll be no jawjacking after the rally record. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> been a nice exclamation point. Watch the steal from Nick Van Exel. And then the dunk by Eric Martin. That gave Cincinnati a 10-point edge with 3.01 remaining. In uh, college, not high school, <laughs> at Ohio State, Cincinnati beat the Buckeyes. John Havlicek, there's his son Chris, a member of the Virginia team. And this Bearcat team won the national championship in 1961, 62 under Ed Junker as the coach. Here's Doug Smith. Quick outlet pass, Van Exel. And they'll bring it back and work on the clock. They're up by 10. The winner gets North Carolina or Arkansas. They meet after this game. And then don't forget tomorrow, a doubleheader in the Southeast. It's Kentucky against Florida State, then from St. Louis, Indiana against Kansas. Take it away. Jason Williford saves it for Virginia. But they need a lot of points in a short time. And one way to do that is to try to drive and get yourself to the free throw line. Jeffries. That's good. 62-54. Cincinnati has to continue to look to score the basketball. You want to be patient, but you don't want to be on your heels. If a good shot is available, you've got to look at knocking it down. 145 remaining in the game. Foul is called on Corey Alexander. That's his third and the team 10th shooting two. On West Michigan and George Washington, two-point lead for Michigan at the half. And coming up next from Seattle, Vanderbilt takes on Temple. Let's go here. 
It's 41-37, still tight, and we'll take you west to show you the final moments of the Michigan encounter. Well, that Vanderbilt Temple game will be interesting. John Chaney has really got his club on a run of late. They're not real deep, but they get contributions in the point column from three or four starters. And they try to confuse you defensively. They'll throw a lot of different looks at you defensively. Uh, Billy McCaffrey has had, a, had an outstanding year for Vanderbilt. Van Exel gets one of two. Alexander. Nine to three, and that's stolen. Eric Martin, it'll be Virginia's ball. 90 seconds to go. Jeff Jones up and still coaching hard. His team down by nine. From the corner, air ball. Martin fouled by Smith. That's the first for Smith. Jeff Jones' wife, Lisa, who is a working journalist, photojournalist. Yeah, she gets to work out, as does her husband. And at the line, Eric Martin. Well, Cincinnati wasn't quite as stifling with their pressure. But nonetheless, they put together enough energy defensively and got enough key baskets and penetrations from Nick Van Ex of this half to stretch this out to a double-digit cushion. And unless Cincinnati gets seven points, this will be the 22nd time this season that Virginia, rather, that Cincinnati has held an opponent under 60 points. They are defensive wizards. Offensive foul. Four on Parker. Roselle <laughs> Durden will check in now for Terrence Gibson. Alan Jackson did not see action tonight. He is normally the starting guard, a senior at the off guard. Probably will not play on Sunday if Cincinnati advances. Chances are that he will have arthroscopic surgery for cartilage tear next week win or lose and it's going to be win oh yeah they put the sentence on this one smith takes the three nope he was inside van exel and it's going to look a lot much worse on the scoreboard than it actually was as cincinnati now Alexander misfires on the shot. And Martin gets it back into the hands of Van Exel, who will shoot free throws with 27.7 seconds remaining. Well, this young man overcame a horrid shooting night. He got streaky in the second half, and he also chipped in with 10 assists and two steals. Well, he knows he has the green light to get shots up. He also knows that Bobby Huggins has tremendous confidence in him, as does as do his teammates to run the show, and they'll ride his poor periods knowing that he can make enough winning plays night in and night out. Jeffries is out. 41-37 Michigan with 15 minutes remaining in that, and we will take all of you out to Seattle for the final moments. Michigan, George Washington, Van Exel. Well, it wasn't pretty, but I'd much rather have a car that's running than one that's spotless and clean. And I'm sure Cincinnati would much rather have the victory than a pretty picture. And they're going to get it. They're up 71-54. And now both coaches are going to their benches. Here's Doug Smith. And they try and save it. That's Rock Mitchell, a senior from Richmond, Virginia. And it's out of bounds, and Cincinnati will inbound. 
Chris Alexander, a freshman, comes off the bench now for Jeff Jones' team. So Cincinnati's going to go 27 and 4 and into the Elite Eight for the second year in a row. And hopes alive for the third national championship for the Bearcats. They got them back to back 30 years ago. This team is really playing with a lot of confidence. They're together, they're hardworking. And again, this hasn't been a pretty victory, but they continue to desire the respect of the media and the fans. And if you win enough, it ultimately comes your way. Bearcats will get either North Carolina or Arkansas. That ball is stolen by Rock Mitchell. Saves it, puts up the shot. No. And this one is in the books. Nick Van Exel leads the way in the second half. 19 points, 11 assists, and two steals. So the Bearcats, the number two seed in the East, advance to Sunday's game where they take on either North Carolina or Arkansas. Our Chevrolet players of the game are Nick Van Exel of Cincinnati and Junior Burroughs of Virginia. Burroughs finishes the night with 15 points. A check in the amount of $1,000 to be donated to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Our final 71-54 for Clark Kellogg and Andrea Joyce. I'm Vern Lundquist. Right now, let's go back to Pat O'Brien in our New York studios.